Okay, conditional independent part two. Okay, so tree diagrams are really handy to help show successive events. And I recommend you pause this video here and try this whole problem by yourself and then check to see how you're doing. For me, I'll just go right for it. So I know Carl's having a bad day and his car will only start 80% of the time. So his car either starts or it does not start. And so it starts 80% and so it does not start 20%. His motorbike, he tries that, it either starts or does not start. Starts or it does not start. And it will only start 60% of the time, so it does not start the other 40. Here is my tree diagram. And I'm assuming these are independent, and every day is independent from the next. So use the tree diagram to determine the chance that both will start. Well, that's this branch of the tree diagram. That is this one. And what the notation for this is the probability of a car and the motorcycle starting, which is 0.8 times 0.6, which will be 0.48. That's part I. When I go this way down the tree, I multiply. Then it says find the probability that only one will start. Well, if that's what I'm looking for, that's this branch here because the car started. And that's this branch here because the motorcycle started. So that's the probability the car starts and the motorcycle does not. Plus the probability that the car does not stop start and the motorcycle does. And get in a habit of writing notation out because this is the thinking step. These are where you get your method points here. Adding because they're two separate events. And these events are disjoint because they both can't happen at the same time. And so then it's a matter of just multiplying across the tree. 0.8 times 0.4 plus, and then 0.2 times 0.6, which will be 0.32 plus 0.12, which is uh, 0.54 is the probability of that happening. And then finally, determine the problem that neither will start five days in a row. Well, here is the last branch here is neither starting. So the probability that neither start is this. And that's 0.2 times 0.4, which is 0 0.08. Well, the probability that neither will start five days in a row, well, the first day the probability of that happening is this times the next day is that, times the next day, times the next day, times the next day, which is 0 0.08 to the power of five, which is a very small value there, 0 0.08 to the power of five, which is really, really small, but that's a probability of it five days in a row, it's not gonna happen. And finally, we have two events, A and B, such that this is true. We are told that A and B are mutually exclusive. Find A and B. Well, if they are mutually exclusive, we know here's how we can find A and B from here. We know A, we know union, we're looking for probability of B. But if they are mutually exclusive, it tells us something about the in overlap. If they're this overlap will be, this value here will be zero. And so in essence, I'm using this formula, not because I've got it memorized, but because I know this is zero. And so then it's just a matter of plugging it in. I know that I'm gonna get 0.5, a union B is equal to the probability of A, 0 0.2, plus the probability of B. Well, that's clearly easy to see, the probability is 0 0.3. B says, given A and B are independent 
find v. Well, if these two events are independent, I know this about independence. So using my general formula that says p union a, a union b is p a plus p b minus the intersection of the two. Well, I'm going to call p b equal to x. And I'm told from the problem this is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.2 plus x minus probably a and b is 0 0.2 times x. And so now it's just a matter of solving for x. I subtract the 0.2, I get 0 0.3 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.2, 0.8x. So x will be 0 0.3 over 0 0.8, which is 3 eighths is your x value that if they're independent. And now, finally, given that this is true, using conditional probability, I know, if I get rid of this, make some space for myself, if I use my conditional probability ideas, I know that A given B is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Well, from that I know this is 0 0.1. A and B I just found out or sorry a and B so probably if a given B is this equals the probability of a and B over the probability of B now again I'm going to use this idea here oh no not independent events wrong one I'm going to use my general formula idea which I have below but I'm going to use it in this scenario now. Let me eliminate this. From here, I know that this is 0. Oh, try that again. This is 0 0.5. This was 0 0.2. Probably of B, we called X. Well, if this is x, it's 0 0.1 is equal to the probability of a and b over x. It's going to be 0 0.1x is what a and b is, and multiply by x. So 0 0.3 is equal to 0 0.9 over x. And so x is 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.9, which is 1 third now. And so we can find B based upon the th different situations that exist. B can be very different things. Good night for now.